It's kind of all about how you can kind of bring back that sense of wonder for people and build a product that's remarkable to them or build yourself to be remarkable to people. Um, so how do you do that? Well, here's a few things that I try to do in my daily life to bring back that sense of wonder and find things remarkable again. And then, you know, kind of, then it's kind of an exercise in repackaging that remarkability and showing it to others so that you can open their eyes. Uh, one thing I do, you know, it's kind of a crazy world we live in with Twitter and Facebook and email and text message and voicemail, which voicemail needs to go away, but uh, that's a talk for a different day. Uh, but one of the places that I've found I actually get to be to myself and I don't have to be accountable to my cell phone is when I'm in my car driving, stopped at a stoplight. And I've caught and kind of pushed myself to get in the habit that when I'm at a stoplight, I look around the intersection and I try to point out as many remarkable things around me as possible. So, you know, maybe I'll think to myself, wow, it's remarkable that there's 200 million cars that are all navigated by this green, yellow, red system and we all don't immediately crash into each other when we leave our driveways every day. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, you know, it's amazing to me that people have found a way to mold this concrete material to make perfectly rounded curves so that we know where to walk and where to drive. Um, it may sound stupid to put in those terms, but I think it's a good exercise in kind of reminding yourself of all these wonderful things that we can enjoy in our everyday lives. and and. Uh, and I think that will kind of spill over into your professional and personal life and that you'll be more grateful for what you have and the world that we live in. And you'll also start to see uh, parts of your work that can be made more remarkable. Because you'll, you'll start to see the places where other people have overlooked what's remarkable about them. And those are the places you want to focus in and, and kind of re-imagine uh, and re-reveal that uh, remarkability as part of the product or your work or whatever or service or whatever it is you're doing. Um, I already talked about this a little bit, but find things that are broken. Remember, your number one calling in whatever industry you're in is to be a disruptor. Find the stuff that's broken, and then go either find a way to fix it, or find uh, an alternative that's not broken. Uh, I think if you only take one thing away from this short little talk today, be a disruptor, find things that are broken. And the only way to do that is by getting in the habit of playing that game every day. So, you know, as you're going through your daily life, start to try to think, hey, how can this be better? You know, this is frustrating. This you know, anything that's frustrating for you, that's the indicator. That's broken. There's got to be a better way to do it. Um, do new things. You know, one of the last months I was at Philip Morris, the vice president of marketing, this guy that makes millions upon millions of dollars and has, you know, tons of power in the company, gave an address to the whole marketing department. He didn't talk about Marlboro at all. He didn't talk about marketing at all. The only message of his short talk was, drive a different route to work here, to this location where I'm speaking to you, this office, every day. Drive to work a different route every day. You know, I can't really ask for a raise of hand, but I'm guessing that most of the people listening probably drive to school or drive wherever they're going the same roads most of the time. Um, don't do that. Drive a different way, okay? It'll, be, it'll amaze you the way that it kind of picks up your mind, that you kind of have gone into autopilot driving to school or work or whatever it is, and you stop to you stop to realize all these amazing things happening around you, and you kind of wake up your mind by driving a different way. Um, next, turn off your cell phones. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, seek out people and companies that you find remarkable. Ultimately, the, the ultimate judge of remarkability is you. It's whatever in your eyes is remarkable. So go find the people and the companies and the products that you find remarkable, and then try to uh, try to you know offer to you know do their laundry or clean their floors or something. You know, there's an old adage that you don't ever turn down a seat on a rocket ship, even if it's the back of the you know back of the rocket ship next to the bathroom and it stinks. It's better to be on that rocket ship than outside of the ship. And so if you find something that you think is remarkable and has the capacity to really be amazing and, and do big, impactful things, take any seat on the ship you can. Offer to work for free. One of the biggest pieces of advice that I, give, that I tell people is if you want a job, you know, why, do you, why do you send in a letter talking about yourself? You should start doing work for the company for free, and if they think that's good work, they'll probably hire you. 
You know, there's so much more sense to that approach than sending in like a form that looks like everyone else's that has your name and contact info and GPA. Um, okay, so that's kind of the end of that little riff on that definition. The Twitter question or the writing question or the thought question I'll put to you is what are you going to do differently tomorrow? Maybe it's brush your teeth with a different hand, maybe it's drive to work a different way, but try to think of something and commit to doing it differently tomorrow, something that's part of your natural daily habit. Just as a little thought experiment, life experiment, you can tweet it out, write it down, think about it, whatever, but go do it tomorrow. Uh, third and final definition, uh, marketing is connecting people through ideas. Connecting people through ideas. Uh, I'm a firm believer that I, people don't move the world, ideas move the world forward. And they just have people behind them who have grasped onto them and latched onto them and really believe in those ideas. So, you know, if I were to tell you, you know, what you should do as soon as you get that diploma, go find an idea that you really identify with and, you know, push that idea forward. And that'll kind of involve finding other people who identify with that idea, but find an idea that you can really grasp onto and run with it. And the best way that I've found and I really believe this, is I, I view ideas as a muscle. Just like a bicep that flexes and you go to the gym and you lift weights and you do curls and you look at yourself in the mirror and you're so strong and awesome looking. Uh, the idea, the ability to create ideas is a muscle just like your bicep. So what would you do? You just got to start coming up with ideas to exercise, just like lifting a barbell. So every day when I get up, I make a list and I come up with 10 ideas that have to do with that list. And it might, and it's off the wall stuff like, you know, what, how, what, what are 10 ways to totally explode the mustard category in the supermarket? Or, you know, what are 10 ways to make watching an NCAA basketball game more fun, more engaging? Or what's 10 animal named beers that I could come up with? Or, you know, it it's, can be totally off the wall or more, more relevant to whatever you have going on that day but come up with ideas. I have now four binders that I'll have, you know, probably over a thousand ideas in them. And the whole, you know, the purpose is you're getting good at coming up with ideas so that when your back's against the wall, which will happen early in your career, someone will be like, okay, go solve this problem for us. You can go think of a lot of ideas really quickly. And then the other purpose is, you know, as you come up with more ideas, eventually you'll stumble upon that one that really moves you that you're really connected to, and then when that happens, you'll know what you need to go do next. You need to just go start finding people who have think the same way, or start a company in that area, or start working for a company in that area. Um, so that's a good way to find an idea to move you. Uh, but they're probably already around you. Um, I came up with an example, I brought my uh, loaded jaw water bottle, and as a comparison point, this plastic, but kind of cool, because it's like narrow and, uh, you can fill it up and whatnot. This one was given to me. I'm trying to, okay. This one was given to me at a street fair as like a little giveaway. I don't really have much connection to it. This one, rep, you know, Loda Jaw is a bike ride, 200 mile one day bike race from Logan, Utah to Jackson, Wyoming, in which I cried at mile 175 because I didn't think I was going to make it and I was so dehydrated. But I crossed the finish line and, you know, this is my favorite water bottle. This will be with me for the rest of my life. So go find things like this, you know, that represent ideas like human endurance and this persistence and this crazy thing that is loaded jaw, this 200 mile one day bike ride. Go find things like this to work for or to work on because they'll be that much more powerful um, and have that much more impact than just being the guy handing out little doodads for, you know, Joe Schmo's water bottle company on some street fair. Um, you know, same thing with the Livestrom brand, right? This guy took plastic yellow wristbands and turned it into a $100 million plus charity. Find a product that has a real moving idea behind it like that and then go work for them. Um, actually, yeah, so that's my thoughts there. Did you stop me for some reason? No, you're Bridget? good. Um, uh, it's kind of a flickering, so I was just going to see if Ethernet would connect better, but I'm stuck behind the chair. <laughs> okay.
Okay, I'll try to talk slowly in case oh, the fine. connection is slowing down. But I'm almost done. I want to get to questions here if you if y'all have any. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is, I think if you look at our generation, and I, you know, I'm only 26. I think you know Ben and Astor are still included too. They definitely are actually. Um, if you look at our generation, I think the one skill that our generation lacks or is most lacking in is focus. You know, on the other side of that coin. Is it okay? Uh, you, cut, you said it on the other side of that coin, but you're back. Okay, so on the other side of that coin, we're really dynamic generation. We're able to tweet <coughs> to Facebook and do all these things at once. But we're really bad at being focused on just one thing. And I think, you know, probably each generation has their strengths and weaknesses. And I think the weakness of our generation is focus. And for that reason, that needs to be the place where you focus a lot of your energy is on you know, learning to be focused and learning getting, to be getting better at focus. Because just, you know, by the sheer rarity of the skill in our generation, it's the easiest place to set yourself apart. I mean, if you're able to sit down and really think deeply about something for an hour, I mean, it, it doesn't happen that often in daily life because we're so interrupted with cell phones and all this nonsense. If you're able to do that, you already have a skill that most of the millennials probably will never have either because they don't know that's where they're lacking or they don't care because they'd rather tweet and, and post Facebook status updates. Um, so focus on focus would be my final message here. And my last Twitter or, or pen exercise or thought exercise, actually it's neither of those. It's an actual, it's an email exercise, let's call it. Go to someone that you admire. Go, find, go think of someone that you admire who's not your family and uh, tomorrow, tell them thank you for whatever reason that you admire them. It's easy to say that to your parents, and you should be saying that to them. I'm sure you probably do. But go find someone who, whose blog you follow or who's done something and send them a quick email and say, thanks, I admire you, and here's why. I think it'll be a positive experience for them for sure and for you because they will uh, thank you in, in kind. And... Uh, and be that much more motivated in what they're doing. So that's kind of my talk today. Uh, I'll open it up to questions, comments, stories, jokes, anything. Anyone got anything? <laughs> Is there anything he talked about?